Hey everyone, welcome, it's Chris for Vienna Care. Today I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a toxin touch up and I'm gonna be using Tox Stuff. We know that there's, there's at least seven different um, types of botulinum toxins that are you know, out in the world um, and it ranges from A all the way up to G. Now when you're dealing with cosmetic procedures such as doing a Botox treatment or any other type of neuromodulator for a cosmetic purpose, you're gonna be looking at botulinum toxin type A. And that's exactly what Toxta is. This is a product that needs a reconstitution. When you're looking at reconstitution, you're gonna be using either a purified uh, saline or water. My preference that I'm gonna be using today is gonna be a bacteriostatic saline. Uh, per the information, this is a highly purified botulinum toxin type A, which should allegedly um, help prevent resistance. So if you're not familiar, there is a thing and it is very rare. People can actually build up resistant um, to botulinum toxin type A. Odds are that you're not gonna be experiencing that, but this has a higher percent chance of you not building a resistant to that, so that's pretty cool. And then this could last up to four months, we'll see. Uh, typically when I'm doing my treatments, I will typically be about, it used to be about two months, but now I'm about two and a half to three months or so. Now, first and foremost, we need to cleanse your skin and we will be using 70% isopropyl alcohol to disinfect the area that we will be treating. And I already know the areas that I'm gonna be treating and that's gonna be my crow's feet. It's gonna be a little bit of microtox under my eyes. I'm gonna be treating the glabella complex and I will be doing a little bit through my forehead to just mildly treat the frontalis. I'm just gonna go and open this box. So there's a little nice little side indentation here that you can use to open your box. And then inside you will find an insert tell you everything about the product. There also is a little guide here that shows proper placement of product. And then it also goes over the dilution, how to do actually dilute the product, which I will be showing you how to do today. Do not worry, it is simple. It is so simple, it's not anything to be apprehensive or nervous about. Inside the vial, you will basically see a little tiny amount of white powder just around the very brim. It literally will look like almost nothing is in there. That's exactly what it should look like. That is your freeze-dried botulinum toxin. So I have my toxin. I'm just gonna open this up. Now once this is reconstituted, typically you would wanna use it within approximately 24 hours per manufacturer's instructions. I'm gonna open my syringes. For reconstitution, it is gonna be approximately two and a half mils of saline that will be injected into my 100 unit vial of botulinum toxin. And in this case, I'm using my tox stuff. So I will be using my 0.5 or half mil syringes, and I will be using five of these. And the reason why I'm using five syringes of saline is because I need two and a half mils to be put in here for the correct reconstitution. Now, so I'm not wasting syringes, I'm just gonna use these two, and I'm going to insert it in here and fill that up, and then I'm gonna re be refilling these each two more times, and then I'll do another one. So now that I'm ready to put my saline in, I'm just gonna remove this silver cap, like so. I'm gonna use an alcohol pad, and I'm going to clean and disinfect the very top of this, just for extra sanitation. All right, so so far there is two mils of saline in there. All I need is one more full syringe. I'd like my toxin to be a little bit stronger, so I'm just gonna do slightly less than a full syringe. So once that has been filled with my saline, I'm just gonna swirl it around a little bit, and that's just to make sure everything is mixed up nicely. You shouldn't be shaking this, there's no need to shake it. You literally just need to roll it around. And once you have your product, this is the amount that it looks like. So this is your 100 units. 
This is exactly what 100 units looks like. Let's go ahead and give myself another little wipe down and then I will put some marks on my face. I'm gonna be treating this area kind of through here. I don't need much through here, okay? And then I'll obviously be treating, you can see I have very strong muscles that pull down. So I'll be treating the Procerus and I'll be treating my corrugator muscles, which makes up that glabella complex. And I might treat just the sides through here. For bunny lines, I might treat right in here and on the side here just to help prevent some of that. I'll be treating the crow's feet area and I'll be doing a little bit of just micro tox just under the eye area. And that's gonna help prevent um, some of this creasing. Now it's not gonna make it completely go away. It shouldn't go away because that would look extremely unnatural. So a typical rule of thumb is where you see your pupil, you're not gonna be, essentially, you're gonna have a line that, you're not gonna go past this line. And typically, one does not treat about two centimeters close to the brow. So you need to be at least two centimeters away from the brow to prevent any kind of brow ptosis, which is a drooping or dropping of the brow. Now it's worth mentioning, if you have very strong lines across your forehead and you're treating the frontalis muscle to eliminate those, you will drop your brows. They will be lower than what you're used to, and that's only because the frontalis muscle that goes across this area is the only thing that holds your brows up. So if you treat this, you will essentially have a brow drop. I typically need to just stay within this region here for myself and a little bit high on my hairline where I get a little bit of wrinkling through here. That's it. Now, I'm gonna be using a different technique today. Typically when I'm treating my own, doing my own toxin, what I've done in the past is I would treat my Procerus, I would treat the corrugator muscles here, and then I'd also span out to here. Now, I'm gonna be doing a little bit different of a technique. I'm gonna use a slightly higher dose, um, and I'm only gonna be using three points, and that's gonna be for my Procerus. And then I'm gonna basically come almost at an in-between. You can see where this muscle is. This is the bulk of the muscle. You can see that muscle. So, instead of me injecting here, I'm probably just gonna go right here. Let me use my mirror. All right, so my Procerus, I'm gonna inject here. My corrugator muscle, instead of injecting here and here, I'm gonna be a little bit farther over. And that's gonna allow me to hopefully just paralyze this whole portion here. And then that should cause a little bit of a lifting here because the corrugator muscle is responsible in the Procerus, they're responsible for pulling down. So by weakening that downward pull, it's gonna raise it away, which will eliminate that wrinkle right there. For my crow's feet, I want to stay at least a centimeter away from my or, where the orbital bone stops, but outward. So I'll be doing three injections here, three injections here. I'll be doing an injection above each brow for myself. I don't want to have this kind of a exaggerated brow, which can happen. So for me, I usually will put one unit right above the brow, and that will cause this to drop down just slightly, so once it's done, I won't have a severe arch. Each one of these marks is where I'm gonna be placing more product. This is a stronger side for me, so I tend to have more wrinkling, which is why I have more, more units being put in on this side. But that's essentially it. Now, for dosing, my dosing isn't gonna be the same for you. My dosing is what works for me. And then also, my, I made mine a little bit stronger, but just very slightly, uh, because I just know what works for me. And what works for me may not work for you. Uh, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna do seven units in each one of these. So that's gonna give me a total of 21 units just right there. And we'll see how that turns out. Typically, I would use anywhere from 25 to 30 units. We'll see how this does, especially since I made it a little bit stronger. And that's the beat of it. So I'm using less than I normally would, but I'm using a stronger dose if that makes any sense. Um, and then in two weeks, if I feel like I need more, I can always add more. So that's the, also the beauty of doing this yourself. So I'm gonna use seven units in each one of those. I'll only use about one unit 
for eat for the sides here for the bunny lines two and a half to three units in each one of the marks injection points for my crow's feet area approximately one to two units for each of these i'll have a little tiny bit that i'll just do little tiny dots through here. It's not even a unit, it's not even a half of a unit. It's literally just a micro amount. Just whatever I can feel go under the skin, that's all it really needs. Have three syringes full. Each one of these is 20 units for the type of syringe that I'm using. So that's gonna be a total of 60 units. With my calculations, I have approximately 59 units marked out. And it's gonna be essentially two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, so that's 18 units through the forehead. Plus, I have one unit for each one here for the bunny line, so that's gonna be 20 units, plus seven, 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 that's 21, so we're at 41. And then we have approximately three units per injection point at the crow's feet, so 99, that's 18, plus 41, and that's gonna give me a total of 59 units. I have 60 here, so I wanna make sure there's no air bubbles in here, so we'll give that a little flick. Remove my cap. There's no air bubbles, so that's good to go. Now, as I mentioned, on my particular syringe, there's approximately 20 units, so each one of these hash marks is one unit. Let's go ahead and get started. So I like to just kind of furrow and grab that muscle. I have one unit that I'm gonna put here, and that's gonna complete that amount, All right? So that completes that. So we had seven units in each. That last one made the seven units. And then one unit in each of those, totaling out to 21, 22, 23 units. I'm starting to do my forehead. The frontalis is, the frontalis is very, sh I don't wanna say shallow, but it it's, you don't go as deep. You do a very superficial injection. Just to wipe down. This is surgical marker, so it will come off easily. I have approximately six units left in here, and that's gonna be enough for me to essentially do my little bit of microtox underneath my eyes, and maybe whatever's left, I will sporadically place where I just feel like I need it. So that is gonna be a total of 60 units. So now we'll just do a little bit of tiny microtox underneath of the eye. And like I said, I'm literally just putting just the tiniest bit amount. Once I feel it in there, that's all it needs. It's very superficial for me. All right, and that should be good. And I have two units left. And I'll just place those wherever I feel like I need it. All right, so that's it. I have wiped down my face again with some 70% ice purple alcohol. As you can see, yes, I still have some purple marks from that surgical marker, which whatever, it's completely fine. When I go wash my face in a little bit, it'll go away. Your aftercare after doing a botulinum toxin treatment is to do not lay down for the next four hours, no strenuous activity like working out, things like that, no sitting in a sauna. And the reason being is because you want the product to stay where it is. You don't want it to migrate. So if you just had this done, you go lay down and sleep, that product could migrate to areas that you don't want it to do. Um, especially if you've treated this area here and it migrates upward. Um, or if this migrates too far over, you could potentially have browtosis. Just don't lay down for the next four hours or so. Don't do the strenuous activity. This is your free pass to not work out, but yeah, that's your aftercare. No workout, no sauna, no strenuous activity, no laying down. Um, avoid alcohol for the next 24 hours. I'll do a check-in in approximately 10 days to let you guys know how everything is going and so you can see how my treatment is, in, is taking into effect. All right, welcome back, you guys. So this is my 10-day check-in uh, post-toxin treatment utilizing Toxta from Vienna Care. Now, 
I'm very happy with my result. I had looked back at the last time I did my treatment and the last time I did my treatment was about four months ago and that's a little rare for me because I'm typically using um, a toxin previously for about two and a half, every two and a half to three months and my previous treatment actually lasted me about four months until I needed to do another touch up. So that was actually pretty awesome. So I'm excited to see how long the tox stuff um, will last for me. Here we are. Crow's feet have been treated. I did the microtox under, micro underneath the eyes. So a little less crinkly. I'll probably go back through and do a little bit of uh, microtox under here, just a little bit, just to soften like that a little bit. But I'm gonna wait for the full 14 days. But this is me furrowing. and raising my brows. So I still have some movement. I am not completely frozen. I can still be expressive. And that's what I want. I like that. I don't want to be completely frozen because I want people to be able to <laughs> read my expressions and emotions. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Be sure to subscribe to Vienna Cares channel. And if you love this video and you want to see more content like this or just, you know, see more of me, you can head over to my channel um, at youtube.com slash Christopher McGrady. So that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Stay healthy, be well, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.